Fright Night is a talk show with published authors, writers, and content creators discussing both the creative and technical sides of writing, as well as the industry surrounding it from novels to screenplays to comics and more. And now, here's your host, author Travis I. Sivart. Well, thank you, Cogsley, for that incredible introduction. Um, welcome to Right Night. Tonight's topic is going to be personally defining success or defining personal success. It can go either way, and we'll get into that shortly. I want to let everybody know who's listening via podcast. We do have a live quasi-in-studio audience right here with us via twitch.tv slash Travis Tavern Talk. And for our folks who are chatting with us, keep in mind we are recording a podcast, so... We may not read all the comments that go on the screen, but we'll definitely pick out our favorites that are consisting of relevance to the topic, or at least just amusing to us. Also want to remind everybody that we are an adult show with adult language. (laughs) Thank you, thank you, thank you for the applause. Here's your face. Um, Damn it, I lost where I was. Disclaimer, (laughs) bigger, uh, let's just move into, hey, I'm Travis Sivart, host and creator of the show, as well as author of the Incredible Portal series, and just recently, book three came out in the beginning of December, and I'm so thrilled with the reception of that. That is a fantasy world where people from our world, in the moment of their death, are transported to this fantasy world where they are then in a different body with a different skill set and a different life that they have to adjust to, as well as all the other stuff. Um, now let's turn this over here and let Aaron introduce himself. Hi, I'm Aaron Kennedy. Uh, I've been a technical writer for about 25 years. Uh, I wrote Persona Non Grata, the first of the Ships of Valor series. Uh, currently working on the Icarus Black series set in the same universe. Uh, it's basically Harry Potter in space. Uh, Michael? And I am Michael Thompson. I am an independent author and illustrator. One of my books is Winslow Hoffner's Incredible Encounters, Great Folklore, book. Fantasy, in the High Seas. Thank you about cryptids, sea monsters, epic urban legends, a few have beheld, but there's one man who's seen them all, the gallant fisherman Winslow Hoffner. And he's regaling his tales of epic adventure to a couple of journalists who discover their small harbor town is harboring incredible secrets. You can check this out in my other books on michaelthompsonbooks.com, M-I-C-H-A-E-L-T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N books.com. Also wanted to remind everybody that not only can you pick up these books, but you can also pick up um, merchandise for the podcast itself. And you can get that in various places such as bit.ly slash tavern merch. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash tavern merch. And I also want to remind everybody else with those bit.ly links, you can find my books at B-I-T dot L-Y slash Travis books. And Aaron's books at bit.ly slash Aaron Kennedy. That's A-A-R-O-N Kennedy, like our previous president. And uh, three future presidents, but that's a good half century or more away before we start seeing that again. But anyhow, um, what are you guys reading or what are you writing on? What's your project that you're enjoying right now? Let us know either in chat or via email at rightnightshow at gmail, spelled just like the podcast, right, W-R-I-T-E, night, N-I-G-H-T, show at gmail.com. Okay, I think I've covered all that stuff. Oh, wait, one more thing. Don't forget our other podcast, Stealing for Survival and Talk of the Tavern. Let's go on from there. Let's talk a little bit about defining personal success or personally defining success. Basically, Success is not something defined by society, though society often demands, or we expect it, to define this for us. And I think that's a horrible thing. Now, this topic itself was actually Aaron's idea, so I want to give Aaron first chance to go on about this, and then he'll pass it on to Michael, and then Michael will pass it on to me, and we'll each throw things in between. Aaron, what were your thoughts when you, what are you thinking here? Okay. Well, uh, when I first kind of envisioned this one, I'm like, okay, we're writers. So when we're talking about success, um, we've got a portfolio of works. So our composite stuff. So Travis has written dozens of books from his uh, 27 Thoughts series to the Portal series to uh, Silver and Smith and so forth to his individual works and so forth. So each book has got success 
and each series and so forth. But when you're writing something, you got to figure out, okay, is it successful? Is the series successful? And so on and so forth. Um, me, I've written articles and things like that. Is the article successful? And the way I kind of do that is what kind of feedback do I get individually? Um, and I'm going to use my articles just as an example. Uh, I got one in Arty, uh, Army Times and one in NCO Journal. How many likes did I get? Um, and the, did I get 50 views? Did I get 100 views? Did I get 500? Whatever. It's just a number. I picked an arbitrary number and I said, hey, if I get 10, did I get 10 likes on it? It was a success. That means 10 people read it. Yeah. If I got 10 reads off of this thing that took me however long it took me to read, that was a successful article. Okay? Um, and you can pick anything you want. Just predefine it before you publish it. How many people read it? How many people commented on it? Something. But you predefine it. That way you got some measure of feedback that you can quantify. Okay? And it doesn't matter what it is. It's the you know, number of people that read it, number of people that commented on it. Uh, so your reviews, your purchases, um, comments on this show, number of downloads, number of views that we have while we're streaming it. These are measures of success, the metrics that you got. Um, uh, persona non grata. I'm able to track it via KDP and things like that. Um, there's the old uh, saying that the average book only makes about three to four thousand dollars over the life of its sale in the first year is about three hundred dollars so it's about 10 years to kind of recoup it um one book never really makes an author money it's a series that does um travis is kind of a prime example of that he's got to churn them out the portal series uh and silver smith are where he's gonna do that hopefully. Um, <laughs> hopefully hopefully hey we're all kind of like that my name recognition comes from my articles, not necessarily from my book. Um, uh, so that's kind of my thought process on that. What do you think, Michael? Well, I have a few comments before we move on to it, before we totally turn the floor over to Michael, though. Michael, did you have any oh. comments on what he said? Yeah, I was going to say, I think uh, I, I like I liked what you said early on when you were using uh, Travis's, uh, you know, his personal library of work as an example. I think that that is, you know, I, I, I don't know if you, if you guys, uh, if you guys like to do this, uh, I, I sort of like display all my, all my books uh, cover out right now. Um, and I, it's just kind of, it's, it's like a neat way to have an artifact of all that time that you put into it to, so you can look up and say, ah, you know, I like I did to keep it. a whiskey glass of my tears instead. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh come now. A glass, sir. A glass. A glass per book. <laughs> oh, a glass, sir. A glass. <laughs> so I did have a when when Michael finishes his thoughts, I have a few comments or questions about your thoughts there. Sure. Uh, I, I I think I think definitely. Um, I I mean, finishing a book in itself is a massive success, mm -hmm. and and just the the internal uh the, just the feeling of ah it exists now is is a thrill because the experience of writing you know you have you have these you know these images filling your head and you know uh, you're always it's like you're working on it in the background of your mind all the time and so to see it finally uh at, com at completion like that that's the, that's the primary that's the primary goal you know so that's what stuck out to me what what, what were you gonna say aaron Specifically, you mentioned how many likes and views you get on the NCO journal, et cetera. And forgive mm -hmm. me if I, if I mix the two. Yeah, things. no, you're fine. Um, so is that an online thing then? It is. It is. See, for some reason, it makes sense, but it, it felt like with it being a military thing, it should be pieces of paper handed around instead of a digital format. And I don't know why no, no, it's no. stuck in the 90s. No. <laughs> what up because we're we're old sir mm, <laughs> what are, uh because the army times used to you know, once a week it would come out or excuse me once a month it would come out as a monthly paper it was the army times just handed out right uh it's it's manufactured by the same people that make usa today it's the garnett corporation or whoever makes it now um 
it monthly it's a monthly rag um it uh but it's now published weekly and daily online um yeah I was just so curious just verifying that it's strictly digital i also wanted to say something you mentioned about uh name recognition you have a bonus boost um you, you mentioned i have name recognition for whatever else then you have name re- being military that gives you automatic cred with a certain group of people that could be a very a good bit. audience to dip into i mean if you basically put this in the right place and say you know oh i am read this long published in this they're going to read your fiction because they know you're going to have a mindset they can relate to. Uh, Check. And it's one of those... (laughs) I never want to exploit my service. Okay? Uh, It's something I did. It's not... It's something I did. It's something I am. But I'm not going to exploit that because that's one is wrong. different from exploiting, though. And, Uh, you know, if you're part of a club, to go to your club members and go, hey, I did a thing... That's okay, and, and in no way, you know, belittling the military to a club, just using a parallel. Oh, no, 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 right, but it, there's a line there, mm-hmm. uh, and it, being excited about something you did is cool. Um, trying to profit off of it, it could to be- your friends and family it's a line you don't cross uh, to to explain a little more if you put it in your bio that you're military oh, yeah. blah 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 this is going to draw military people who are going to go this is one of ours who wrote a book i'm not saying stand yes. on the base with pamphlets going have you heard about our uh, savior heart um <laughs> <laughs> no 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 and uh, it's one of those yes it's in my bio that i was uh, mm-hmm. that i served in the marine corps um but it's not something that i go because I was a Marine, you should read this book. No, th- there's a no, no, distinct it's, difference. It's networking as opposed to pushing, is what I'm saying. Michael, what's what's your thoughts on the topic here? Um, I think that uh, the, the first thing that pops into my mind, and there, there's lots of like little successes along the way, like, you know, a perfectly crafted sentence, you know, mm. it's like, ah, you know, it make, makes you feel, feel great. But um, uh, the number one, uh, for me, barometer of success is um, is just sharing the work with with people, and then seeing uh, hopefully that it's impacted uh, people. Um, getting it out to as many people who uh, will adore the story and cherish the characters as much as you do uh, is is my is my number one um, way that I measure success. And I, I recently had just the coolest experience right before the lockdown. Uh, with the Chicken Boy mural, um, I did, yeah, one of my best events um, ever uh, so far. I went to my old elementary school, which is the place where I first created Chicken Boy, and and this is my my superhero series. I believe people. you mean Chicken Boy's birthplace. Yes, his hatching place, <laughs> <laughs> where the idea was hatched, and I. Um, and I was invited as uh, as a speaker for Read Across America. And when I got there, it turned out that they were painting their library, and uh, they had you know the the kids had voted on their favorite literary characters that they wanted featured uh, on the library walls. And among you know the Cat in the Hat and Arthur the Aardvark and Harry Potter, they had Chicken Boy and uh, the other characters from the first book muraled on the wall. And I I was I was totally speechless. And so. It's cool because your stories reach people even when uh, even when you're not like like face to face at a book signing or something like that. Uh, your book may be sitting on someone's nightstand. They may be thinking about your character right now, and so it's out there. And that's one of the that's one of the best parts of of releasing a book is knowing that it's out there and reaching people. Michael, by the way, I loved your book display that you mentioned. I never realized what was in front of your computer. I keep mine. In a little shelf up here but i love that concept in front of me i have pictures of people at conventions i've gone to conventions with oh cool yeah i'm like maybe it is time to switch that up and put i don't know um 
But also, I remember when you first told us the story of that mural, and if I remember, I got teary-eyed, because that is just a beautiful damn thing. And I know you've had other people come up to you during conventions and talk about how your different books have influenced them. Yeah, uh, it's cool. I mean, having people return, um, I even had, uh, there was a, so Chicken Boy came out a long time ago. Chicken Boy was my first book that came out 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I had, uh, I had, a, I had a, a reader return to a book signing that I was doing at a, a used bookstore. And I had, you know, obviously all, all my other books uh, there now, but he remembered Chicken Boy and uh, and he saw it from, he was there with his mom, he was 17 and and he's like, oh, no way. And and so they, they came over and uh, he's like, dude, I, I remember, I remember your book from, uh, from uh, my elementary school. You, you came to my class and, and he's like, I love Chicken Boy, this and that. And he's, and, but he never got the first book. He had, he had books two and three. And um, and then he, he wanted to get the first book and he said, he said, oh, oh, oh uh, can we get this? And, and his, his mom's like, you, you want a kid's book? He's like, yes. <laughs> and then he, he puffed out his chest and, 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 he, and he, he was really, really tall. And he's like, I'm 17 and I love Chicken Boy. And was like, <laughs> I remember and he, uh, I, I so remember funny. this story. And if I'm not mistaken, he was one of the first people you asked if you wrote Chicken Boy 4. Would he yeah. buy it? And he was part of the reason you wrote Chicken Boy Four. Yeah, that was part of the reason because I was having I was having uh, just sort of like the feeling to to revisit that series because I had taken a break to write uh, World of the Orb and then Winslow, mm -hmm. and I had had that experience and I also had some because uh, I do the the school talks and so I had some new uh, readers and uh, there was there was sort of new life coming into it and also when you release a book it it breeds success for or it invites success for your other books um it makes them new again like that library we talked about mm -hmm. um because portfolio. yeah the portfolio so someone reads your book and then they they see oh what else does this person have um and uh when i i started asking when i saw these these chicken boy fans i started seeing a few back to back I saw him. I saw another uh, person at a at a Christmas market, and I and I asked them. I said, "If I wrote Chicken Boy Four, would you, would you buy it?" And they all said yes. And I said, "I said, okay, that's really cool. So um, you get you can get the returning audience as well as as well as the new audience, and it can uh, it can it can turn the wheel, you know, and and uh, keep keep the keep the world of the book alive." Very what do you good. think, Aaron? Any Thoughts on all uh, that yeah. before I go on? The big thing is uh, success is incremental. Mm -hmm. um, it From the, okay, it's published, number one piece, uh, to, oh, wow, I uh, every week after this show, or before we start the show, I log on to my KDP. I don't think about it until we start doing the show because it's not that big of a deal. But I log on to the KDP and I just take a look. Oh, I had a sale or I didn't have a sale. This show is really the honest uh, for, oh, hey, look, I had another sale. Last week, right around, uh, uh, I think it was November 10th, I typically have one around Memorial Day and around Veterans Day. I, uh, I do a little charity event uh, tied in with uh, uh, Veterans Day and Memorial Day uh, for Poisson and Angrata um, for those, uh, those, tying back to military stuff. Um, it, but I had a sale running at that time or i had a sale on uh that day happened to get one uh military folks tend to look look for military books on those days mm -hmm. um had a sale it's incremental i always feel good when i have a sale of the book um had a boost of friggin um likes on the two articles as well it's kind of cool yeah. uh you get a little boost of adrenaline helps okay <laughs> And I will you be reading comments shortly here, guys, so give me a moment. There is one comment I want to read before I give my thoughts on this. Is uh, uh, Michael, it's kind of a feedback on what you were saying. Joe says, oh my God, the perfectly crafted sentence. And I think that sentence in itself says a lot. This is oh, something yeah. in the books that I'm reading, specifically, specifically 
Michael Sullivan, who writes the Uriera Chronicles, and um, really I can't remember their names, uh, two authors, one pen name, writes the Expanse series. Both of them have just 10 or 12 perfectly crafted sentences in an, a single novel. Well, they don't necessarily stick with me, but they give me that moment of, oh, that was beautiful. <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah. And it's one sentence. It's not the whole scene. It's the one sentence that makes that scene. And it is beautiful. And one day I hope to gain that skill because I don't, I don't often get it for myself on occasion. But my thoughts on this. Terry Pr mm -hmm. Go ahead. Terry Pratchett does that with some of his comedic stuff. Um, build a man a fire, you'll keep him warm for a day. Set a man on fire, you'll keep him warm for the rest of his life. <laughs> there is. Uh, That's pretty good. And you never know how a reader will take your work and and like uh, a sentence that you may not have even remembered writing. It may be just a perfect sentence to your reader. Okay, so. Uh... My thoughts on the topic is um, personal success, defining your own personal success. I define it in, in layers. It's a pyramid. Mm -hmm. It's a scheme. It's a pyramid scheme. <laughs> um, <laughs> when I am writing, it is what am I writing that day? And mm -hmm. then it's when did I finish that chapter or that act or that book? And then it's a separate thing, a separate success to do the first edit and clean it up and send it to the editor. And then it's another success when I get it back and I do the final cleanup. Then it's a new success when I publish it. And then I want to tell you I, I put it down and I walk away and go to the next thing. But I don't because I hover over KDP for the next two weeks like a vulture waiting for something to die that I can eat. It's... uh. <laughs> ramen because they're small successes <laughs> that's right it's uh it's more like uh when the cats knock a spare piece of food out of his bowl and i can get to it before they do um <laughs> apparently they knock a lot of food out of their bowl from my shape but <laughs> so what i'm saying is and this is going to relate to i'm going to go read everybody's comments now because a lot of what the chat is saying relates to what i'm saying Joe said, it seems like success varies from writer to writer. Even if you never get published, finishing your work could be a big success. I know it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a success for me, but also being able to write about your fears or flaws in a way that allows you to face them or overcome them could also be a kind of success. Which is Dora right. says, I'm successful that I finish a chapter of fan fiction in a month. Absolutely. She says, I told a co-worker at Starbucks I wrote a book, self-published it, and it may not sell any, but if it did, she said, you should be proud that you were dedicated enough to finish a book. And that's true. That is definitely a success. Which, as Doris says, being successful is basically, and Joe backed this one up, being successful is basically just making yourself proud of what you do, which us writers don't do as often as we should. Hmm. And then she adds, it takes a lot of time, effort, and suffering to write anything close to a novel. We don't give ourselves enough credit. People often go up to writers and say they write like crap. And successfully published authors go, then write crap. Because crap can be edited. You can't edit nothing. I had a very long conversation with somebody. I, I streamed my writing. And somebody who came in yesterday, this was like a four-hour conversation where we said the same ten things over and over, which was basically that. Stop talking. Write. Because... Mm -hmm. And my current book that I'm working on, those first six chapters, I was not in the right headspace or whatever, but I wrote them. And now I'm pretty much rewriting them, almost like each chapter, breaking it down, redoing it, adding things. In the first six chapters, I added over 2,000 words because mm -hmm. I pulled a lot of stuff out and put better stuff in. It's almost like I had mm -hmm. the skeleton and I'm fleshing it out now. Yeah, because I just, like now I know by the middle of the book I got on a roll. I did better. It, it usually flows, but it wasn't when I wrote this one. This is why it's been harder to get it out there, and a bit more of a struggle. But the bottom line is, do it and and take the success for the day. Take the success for that one perfect crafted sentence, that one chapter that you finished. 
or somebody else going, hey, I like that. Any thoughts yeah. on that before we go free form? I agree. I agree with all of that. You know, setting uh, those incremental successes, the perfect sentence, the perfect paragraph, a really good day for productivity, a great week for productivity, and, and so on and so forth. It's, uh, and thank you, Joe, for your comment. That's funny. It's, uh, you know, that's something else. I've had people walk up to me and mention how their books have influenced or changed or whatever. And Joe made a comment about the 27 Thoughts series, which I've had people ask me why 27 Thoughts. Um, but the first 27 Thoughts book I put out there, I have had people coming come to me and tell me how it changed their life. It helped them so much. It made a difference. And it's easy to forget those moments when people walk up to you and tell you that. Because you want that feedback again. And it's hard to mm -hmm. remember, as Michael, you mentioned, you don't know who has your book on their nightstand. Right, right. Um, you don't know who it's helping right now that you'll never see, never talk to, never interact with. But it made a difference to them. And... Yeah. We, we all always want that constant feedback and that cookie saying we're a good boy or good girl. Or, um, and it's important to find that satisfaction and level of personal success in yourself. And My yeah. mom really enjoyed your 27 Thoughts on Enjoying Life book Perfect. and became aware of it because of your uh, YouTube video where you you sat and read it and uh she she thought that it was and you just had you just had a really cool and calm way of uh reading it and so she went and bought it um that was that was what made her uh go go and go and purchase that and, and she really really likes that book and by the way i think it's still free on amazon it was perma free which i expected it to be removed from that because of um certain things in place in amazon but they haven't done it yet so it is still free as of this afternoon because like I said I'm a vulture sitting on top of my uh, KDP checking by the way for those that don't know KDP is Kindle Direct Publishing it's basically where you go mm -hmm. to publish a book on Amazon in case anybody's yep. like I don't know what that is um, so what are your personal goals for success right now Aaron you got anything set up what, how are you gauging that right now and then Michael yeah. Uh, personal goals right now is get friggin acres uh Icarus Black 1 completed. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, <laughs> that said, friggin' finishing up a marketing course, I got four weeks left on that before I can. <laughs> so, good. yeah. Uh, how much of that marketing course is helping you plan how to do that book? Um, 20%. So you're getting a reasonable amount of stuff that you're like, I could apply this right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Nice. Um yeah, uh, I'm con. Uh, as frequent viewers know, I'm constantly doing something. Mm -hmm. um, as Travis and Michael have discovered, I'm always doing something. <laughs> um, whether it's uh, Doctor of Business Administration, my current friggin', uh, uh, doctoral program to tradesman stuff or otherwise. He's but, typing his book with his toes. Hey, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to. <laughs> uh, it's crap, but I'm trying to. But as long as you've got writing crap, you can edit crap. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's uh, no, it's, uh, it's a good program. And uh, I actually wrote a uh, the last paper in the course uh, actually was in regards to Icarus Black, which, help, which helped some of the uh the stuff and regards to niche marketing and things like that fantastic uh, which was nice uh, so i was able to get some thoughts in regards to that um mm -hmm. which helped um being part of the the right night community and the greater friggin uh travis tavern talk community was also has also been extremely beneficial um because my social network um helps here um it in many many regards uh because i can spitball things and i can think things through better as to how i'm building uh the universe uh and the characters and so forth right that's awesome it's uh and i really expect you to jump out of the woodwork at some point in time and and point at marketing things as i'm doing things yeah no pressure uh, right in that community i love the sound <laughs> of that yep 
That feels so cool. Nah, but uh, Icarus Black 1's my major goal here. Pro, uh, The big thing is around January, I've got a week-long vacation, another one in April, two-week vacation. That's where the, the real push is going to be. I should be done with Icarus Black 2 uh, right around that time. Awesome. Now, with those, are you doing all at once and publishing one at a time, or are you going to publish them as you write them? Uh, probably going to publish two of them at once, uh, and then freaking try to work through three and four at the same time. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, just for that yeah. one, don't publish them exactly at once. Publish them at no, least no, 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 three no. weeks apart. Sta- yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I'm doing a similar thing uh, with uh, my Winslow series right now. I have, I, just, I finished two. It's at the editor um, and one beta reader, uh, just to double check stuff that he's already looked at. And I'm uh, I broke ground on Winslow three, which is did big you? news. Yeah, hey. so it's really cool. And um, did a lot of started with a lot of research, which is fun research, researching cryptids and urban legends and stuff, and and uh, and then just spending a lot of time mentally with the characters and thinking and pacing. But um, and then I hear I it's hundred percent giraffes. <laughs> that those, yeah well those aren't real even by cryptozoological standpoint um, <laughs> um which, which by the way have you guys watched the i think it's a hulu series might be netflix no it's disney plus um <laughs> the the house of owls or the world of owls or owl house owl house is what it's called i have not the it's, cartoon yes it's absolutely great, yes. Yes, I believe Aaron mentioned it, and uh, another person on Stealing for Survival mentioned it. So Andrew and I watched the first episode. In that first episode, the, the <laughs> main character is taken out of our world into a fantasy-type world when she's being shipped off to, like, boring camp, so she stops being weird and creative and crazy. Um, hmm. And when she's in that world, the, there's a bit of exposition where the secondary character is telling her about this world you know we have fairies we have dragons uh, but giraffes we kicked them out they were just too weird <laughs> um, we gotta put a giraffe on a t-shirt at, at some point it's, <laughs> i got andrea a t-shirt that says i love giraffes and tacos and it's just got a big giraffe head on it <laughs> i like it <laughs> um yeah i'm i'm uh I, so I finished that, and I've moved on to Winslow 3, and I'm doing the Anchor Series thing. I want to get it all done. So my personal goal, um, and we'll see if I can do this. I think I can. I hope I can. I want to get the first draft of the third book done uh, before the end of this year. And I'd like to be at least one book ahead of myself, you know, right. as, I, as I put out one, have one uh, in the queue ready to go. So, so what is your goal structure to remind you that you're successful when you're not in the publishing stage? So right now you're in a planning stage, the other one's with the editor, and you say you want it done in before the end of 2020. Written, yeah. I'm guessing, before 2020, not published. Yeah, the first draft written, yep. So you're going to have to illustrate as well. What is your writing pacing? I think that I... Um, the thing that typically works the best for me is uh, to, I get, it's kind of arbitrary, but just to put it on the calendar and say, by, the, by this point, I want to be at, at this point in the story and, uh, you know, fill up those blocks with uh, the milestones, the story milestones. Mm-hmm. And then, um, and then, you know, as I get to a week, I, I sort of assess where I am and, and what, what small goals will sort of lead to the big goal. And then scratching off those small goals is, uh, as you achieve them, is that cathartic sort of feeling that keeps you going. Be like, ah, okay, yeah, we're, we're getting somewhere. So what about you? Way what goals motivate. are you holding up that you're allowing yourself to say that's a success? Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like it's like trying to trying to, you know, drain the ocean with a spoon. Hmm. You know, you look at the spoonfuls, you don't look at the ocean. Um, Aaron, I stole that from someone. I don't remember who, where that quote comes from. But they, they called. They want their spoon back. <laughs> Never. <laughs> now, what about you, Aaron? When you're writing Icarus Black with all these other things on your plate, how are you setting up your small successes along the way? What is your breadcrumb trail of success? Um, 
big thing is, do I have I defined outline goals? Uh, Icarus Black is defined as a series. Mm -hmm. So I've got, I pre-staged it as it's nine books. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's got three arcs, three books each. All right. I've got an end. I know exactly how it ends. I've got the ending scene. It's written. Um, I've got the beginning. I've just got to get A to Z. Right. Um, it's at this point, I'm just filling in the blanks and it's one of those. All right. Where, which book or which section of which book am I writing now? Have I got a scene here? Have I got a scene there? What have I defined here? What am I sliding into this slot? And is it going to work? Do exactly. I have to juggle this to here, to here, to here, to here? Uh, and I'm getting pretty close to having um, kind of a a massive Bible set up to where it's working. Very exciting. Um, it's, uh, it's working out pretty well. Um, and that's going to be one of the very first stages. Uh, the... The general outline of one is set. Um, three's ending is pretty set in stone. Mm -hmm. uh, nine, it ends. It's going to uh, surprise that, you. Yeah. What? What? Nine's pretty. The way the way nine ends is the way nine ends. <laughs> um, the universe. Hmm? No. The death of the universe. Hey, spoilers. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not nine is the way nine ends. Um, but um, between there and there, you got your your ride. You go on your journey, yeah. Yeah, you, you go. We go on our journey. It's it's like you have you got a puzzle and you have those edges, you know. Right. You're Everything's good. and it's just one of those. Okay, I've got to find the pieces that fit and make it work yeah. for this character. Um, and. I'm getting close. I'm, I'm getting real close. And um, there's certain, I've got not only the protagonist, my narrator, but all the supporting cast are fitting into place. Um, I think I've got a good antagonist. Um, and I'm trying to build it to where our villains are realistic. Mm -hmm. Um and I've got. I'm getting close. Okay. Magnificent. So yeah. to kind of start the wrap up from this, one thing that I'm hearing or seeing in this conversation, and this is something a lot of people, when they start writing, they're unsure of. Am I doing it right? As I talk to you two and, and include my own thoughts, we have very different ideas of how to lay out, how to plan a book, how to write a book. Aaron's got this superstructure that he's building on top of. Michael is doing heavy research and spending time with his characters. And those were his two key points that I picked out of the conversation. For me, I've got this on multiple ongoing series that I'm popping back and forth from book to book, and I lay it out as in like a one to three sentence breakdown of act one act two act three and then i take those and separate them into essentially chapters that i have a word goal for each chapter to keep the pacing now in editing i definitely go over any word goal it's a minimum word goal not a maximum so i don't mind filling a chapter a little more and yeah. and that's how i work so they're all very different techniques and styles and that's what i think a lot of people who are just starting need to remember it's okay to do it your way. There's not a wrong way to do it as long as you're doing it. And beyond that, with the personal successes, is remember the small successes. Every time you accomplish something, whether it's you wrote today and you got your 200 or 2,000 or more words, or you cleaned up something or you planned something, it's all a success. And it's important to allow yourself to feel that. And once you're done, it's important to remember you're still having little successes, even if you're not writing the next book, because somebody else is reading that at this point. And like Mike with Chicken Boy, 
where he was looking at book four, maybe, maybe not, and somebody came back and bought book one. So this, this is a quick reminder of all your successes, they're still out there and they're still happening even though you're not aware of them. Do you guys got some closing thoughts on this? I, lo I love how you wrapped it up. You know, there's no wrong way to do it or there's no there's no right right way to do it but there is a right way with a w yeah there we go. and that's right here on right night hey hey, <laughs> hey, hey away <laughs> i love it yeah so, so uh, six go ahead Aaron. Uh, success is about being happy so when you're kind of predefining some of these things these are the things that are going to make you happy um they don't have to be they don't have to be big Incremental is where I lead in with it. I'm going to be happy if I hit this. Now, you may be ecstatic if you hit this, but I'm going to be happy if I hit this. And you're really like, oh, wow, I got five views. I got five sales. Um, now, it's all cool. I sold. I published it. Oh, that's. I sold five copies. Holy cow. Um, not to family. I sold five copies, not to family. <laughs> Just strangers. <laughs> right. Um, I convinced one person to take a bookmark. <laughs> oh, no, no. It, it, it can be anything. It doesn't matter what it is, but it's something that you've set a goal for and you accomplished. Yeah. Um, which is the real thing. And, yeah. um, and when Travis was talking about superstructure, it's one of those, I've got a, sometimes my stuff's random, but it's like, okay. I figured out an introduction. I figured out the cold open for not only my villain, but my hero. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's important. Um, Cause when we meet Winslow, his cold open sets his stage. That's in mo that's the most important scene for Winslow. Mm -hmm. You don't get that right. You don't get the book right. Exactly. Yeah. And hey, okay. that's what I got. <laughs> okay. Well, so I want to thank everybody. Also, remind everybody that if you do send us an email, we may read that on air. We do have the mailbag that we go through, and you could uh, do that at rightnightshow at gmail dot com. That's w r i t e n i g h t show at gmail dot com. You can even send in if it's your birthday or somebody else's birthday that you want to hear it shouted out on air. Let us know. And I also want to remind everybody, if you like what we're doing here, check out Talk of the Tavern, which is a little more adult and random, toast topics and tangents, and then Stealing for Survival, which is the fantasy role-playing game set in the world that Portals and the Downfall series are both written in. I want to thank everybody, first and foremost, for joining us and listening and viewing, whether it's on podcast or here on the live stream at twitch.tv slash Travis Tavern Talk. But I also want to thank everybody who supported us in other ways, throwing bits such as Tracy. Thank you, Tracy, and others. Uh, subscribing, picking up that merchandise, which we do have the new Christmas merchandise for the stream out there on the merch thing. And also hosting, rating, and those who join us on Patreon, such as Triple U and Ethan Strauss, as well as support us on PayPal monthly subscriptions, such as Musical Wizardry and Verda. And I think that's it. We're going to get out of here. You guys have a great night, and we will catch you again next time. Thank you for joining author Travis I. Sivart and the other writers, content creators, and all-around amazing people for our discussion here on Right Night. Join us again soon, and until you do, make sure you create with passion, enjoy the journey, and remember, every night can be right.